الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على مولانا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحابه ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Welcome everyone My name is Usman Khan and I am the Prince Al-Walid bin Talal Professor of Contemporary Islamic Religion and Society at Harvard Divinity School with a joint appointment as Professor of African and, and African American Studies at the Faculty of Arts and Science of Harvard University. I would like to begin by thanking the 26 confirmed panelists and three artists who accepted our invitation to participate to this international conference, which is the fifth annual Islam in Africa conference held at Harvard uh, Divinity School. Panelists are presenting from Africa, Europe, the United States, South and Southeast Asia. This conference is part of the Harvard Islam in Africa initiative, which I started when I was appointed uh, at Harvard in 2012, an initiative consisting of an annual conference series, an annual lecture series, a summer study abroad program, and a weekly halaqa series. Regarding the lecture series, Islam in Africa has become an important and increasingly vibrant subfield in Islamic studies, attracting numerous extremely talented students who are conducting fine studies that have great impact in all fields in the humanities and social sciences. Dozens of books are published yearly in the field of Islam in Africa, and the lecture series thus provides a platform for the discussion of cutting edge research in the field and to tap into the best of such new work for Africanists and Islamists at all schools at Harvard. And every academic year, the Islam in Africa lecture series brings authors of newly published books and advanced PhD students to campus to discuss their work. The study abroad program is a two month course which takes place every year in Dakar, Senegal at the West African Research Center and introduce participants, mostly undergraduate students at Harvard to the study of belief, knowledge and society in Francophone Africa, which is the title of the program. A weekly halaqa series, which I initiated with some of our graduate students to address the challenges faced by practicing Muslims studying Islam in secular academic institutions in and around Boston, Massachusetts. And the Halaqa series creates a nurturing environment in which Muslim students and their families can grow intellectually and spiritually. The paper by Arman Siddiqui on the Islamic society for spiritual cultivation precisely addresses the ways in which the Halaqa has evolved in the last few years. Last but not least, the conference series, which I started to chart new directions in the study of Islam in Africa. The conference series was initiated five years ago with the first Islam in Africa conference, the first Islam in Africa conference entitled Text, Knowledge and Practice the Meaning of Scholarship in Muslim Africa, convened at Harvard Divinity School in February 2017. The second entitled New Directions in the Study of Islamic Scholarship in Africa was hosted by the Radcliffe Institutes in October, 2017. A collective volume emerged from these two conferences entitled Islamic Scholarship in Africa, New Directions and Global Context, uh, published uh, simultaneously in London by James Curry and in, in, Seneg in Senegal, Africa by Serdis. And uh, it's also coming out in French as Erudition Islamique en Afrique, Nouvelle Piste de Recherche et Contexte Mondial. The third conference, West Africa and the Maghreb, was organized in September to seven, 2018. And the fourth, Africa, Globalization and the Muslim World, in September 2019, and the last co-organized with uh, Professor Zekaria Uld Ahmed Salim from Northwestern Universities, and both were uh, hosted by HDS. Select papers of these last two conferences have been published 
as a special issue of the journal religion entitled Africa Globalizations, Globalization and the Muslim World. Today, we are starting the fifth conference long overdue on the Faida Tijaniya Sufi communities in the first 20th century, a major articulation of global Islam. With tens of millions of disciples worldwide, the Tijani Sufi, the Tijani Sufi order is no doubt a major articulation of global Islam. It was born in North Africa, but its center of gravity shifted to West Africa in the course of the 20th century. And in the 21st century, it was carried by the African diaspora to the rest of the world. Very instrumental in this spread of the Tijaniya is the action of Senegalese Sheikh Ibrahim Nyas and his followers. In 2000, in 1929, Sheikh Ibrahim Yas proclaimed that he was the bringer of the divine flood predicted by Ahmad Tijani, who would lead to the global spread of the Tijaniya, and his teachings have reached tens of millions of people worldwide. One of his ardent followers is indeed right to say that this is a flood which is manifest to all those who have sight. In Arabic. Tijani have written considerably about the doctrine of their order in the last two centuries since the birth of the Tijaniya. And many biographies of prominent Tijani masters are available in Arabic. Yet the first monograph introducing this fascinating Sufi order to a Western audience was published as recently as 1965. It is Jamil Abu Nasr. The Tijaniya uh, the Sufi order in the modern world, London, 19, Oxford University, 1965. A work which hardly told the entire story of the Tijaniya, and it took another 25 years for a collective volume to appear. That one edited by David Robinson and Jean Lutrio in, in French entitled La Tijaniya, in Confrérie Musulmane à la Conquête de l'Afrique, published by Cartala in Paris in 2000. This was mostly the work of historians and Islamists focusing on the spread of the Tijaniya from North Africa to Sub-Saharan Africa. Since not only has the Tijaniya spread to other continents, but the field of Tijani studies has grown exponentially, attracting scholars from all the social sciences including anthropologists, political scientists, religious studies specialists, musicologists, philologists, and more. Dozens of masters, thesis, and PhD dissertations and hundreds of articles have been produced on the Tijaniya in Western and African universities, and many works of Tijani scholars in the Arabic language have been edited and published and or translated into Western languages. Furthermore, the Tijaniya, and especially the Faida Tijaniya, has spread in South Africa, Western Europe, North America, and South and Southeast Asia, where hundreds of Tijani Zawiyas have been created in recent years. Tijanis from West Africa in particular are constantly traveling between their countries of origin and those far regions to give lectures, initiate disciples, and connect with like-minded Muslims in a global Sufi campaign against opponents. Tijani Sheikh have also appropriated the new technologies of information and communication to reach global audiences. Tijani religious celebrations in West Africa are now attracting significant audiences from both within and outside the continent. The international conference, the Faida Tijaniya in the 21st century, a major articulation of global Islam will address these new developments. Among questions that participants would seek to answer the following will be paramount. What contributions have West African scholars made to the articulation of Tijani doctrines? How fast is the Tijaniya and especially the Faida Tijaniya spreading outside the African continent, particularly in Western Europe, North America and South and Southeast Asia? What impact is the translation into uh, European languages of major Tijani works of West African scholars such as Sheikh Omar Tal and Sheikh Ibrahim Yas is having on the reception of the Tijaniya in the world. What are the new pilgrimage routes opened by, Af by the African diaspora connecting their host society 
in the West End pilgrimage centers, especially uh, Tijani Zawiyas in Africa. What are the new legal forms of Tijani Sufi associations? Panelists in this conference include scholars from various disciplines in the social sciences, working on different regions of the world, as well as some Tijani practitioners. The conference consists of seven panels. The first panel is entitled, The Epistemological Foundations of Tijani Sufism. The second and third panel are entitled respectively, Sheikh Ibrahimia's intervention in major debates one and Sheikh Ibrahimia's intervention in major debates two. The fourth and fifth panel are respectively entitled Global Spread of the Faida Tijaniya One and the Global Spread of the Tijaniya Two. The sixth panel is entitled Transnational Connections and the last panel, New Faida Tijaniya Leadership. The conference will close with a introduction to Sufi Madih poetry in West Africa by Dr. Oludamini Ogunaike, followed by the performance of three leading Faida Tijaniya singers, all named Omar, thus the Tree Omar concert, who would recite select poems from the collections of poetry of Sheikh Ibrahim Yas, Sayrul Qalb, Tuhfatu Atayib Al Anfas, Jabril Kas, and Taisir Al Wusul, Ila Hadrat Al Rasul. Before declaring this conference open, I want to thank the many colleagues, friends, and graduate students who have been part of this Islam in Africa initiative. Some of them participated to all conferences as well as to our lecture series. Others have participated to some in alphabetical order. I thank Farah El Sharif, Arman Siddiqui, Norbert Litoing, Ad Adrian Smith, Matthew Steele, Ayodiji Ogunaike, Oludamini Ogunaike, Kimberly Wortman, and Zachary Wright. I would also like to offer heartfelt thanks to the Office of Academic Affairs of Harvard Divinity School, which has provided unflinching logistical support to our conferences, from booking flights and hotel rooms and dinner tables in restaurants to producing posters, arranging for venues and video recording the events for wide dissemination. I especially thank uh, Marlon Conin, Marlon, Marlon Coming. Jennifer Conforti, Bob DeVoe, Karen Grunler Whitaker, and Hersh Blumur. Last but not least, for tirelessly and generously pumping money to make these activities happen, I gratefully acknowledge the financial support of many schools, departments, and institutes and centers at Harvard, including Harvard Divinity School, the Hutchin Center, the Al Walid Bentalal Program of Islamic Studies, the Department of African and African American Studies the Center for African Studies, the Provostial Fund for the Arts and the Humanities, the Weatherhead Center for International Affairs at Harvard, and the Radcliffe Institute. Without further ado, I thereby declare the conference officially open and turn the floor over to Dr. Ayodeji Ogunaike, the chair of the first panel, to introduce panelists and moderate the discussion. Thank you for your attention.